Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, we bring you the most discussed topics related to the current situation and how they are affecting or will affect the economy. The calendar has scrolled to 2023. For good or ill. As a financial newsletter, we are duty bound to hazard our annual market forecast, such as it is. So today we fetch our crystal ball from storage, blow away the dust, and gaze for images of the year ahead. How will the economy fare in 2023? Where will the stock market end the year? Gold? Oil? Bitcoin? The answers, the guaranteed answers, anon. Yet before we glimpse how markets will end 2023, let us observe how they ended 2022. In all, 2022 yielded a very lean harvest. The Dow Jones Industrial Average shed 8.7% on the year, a barren field. But the Dow Jones sprouted a bumper crop against the other main indexes. The S&P hemorrhaged 19.4% last year. The Nasdaq Composite absorbed a wailing even more vicious, down 33% in 2022. Now imagine you purchased Bitcoin last January 1. By December 31 your digital asset depreciated a shrieking 65% in 2022. How do you like it? Yet among the barren soil and the choking weeds some meager flowers emerged. Gold scratched out a 0.2% gain in 2022. Oil, meantime, yielded a half a percent return. Slender, slender gains, it is true. Yet a slender gain is a jackpot against an 8.7%, 19.4%, 33% or 65% loss. And so the man who clung exclusively to oil and gold reaped a relative jackpot in 2022. Yet we will glance backward no more. Let us instead look forward into the year beyond. What can you expect for 2023? For now we limit our crystal gazing to Wall Street and the stock market. So goes January, so goes the year. That is an old Wall Street wheeze in reference to the stock market. If the stock market comes out of January in green numbers, it will likely close the year in green numbers. If the stock market comes out of January in red numbers, it will likely close the year in red numbers. Does this Wall Street lore have anything in it? The stock trader's almanac, a sort of old farmer's almanac for the stock market, argues yes. Its producers have thumbed through the stock market's diary entries since the year 1900. This drudge work reveals this curious and relevant fact. January's performings aligned with the year's performings some 75% of the time. It is true, 75% is not 100%. Yet 75% represents what the numbers men term statistical significance. And plenty of it. It is but five days into January and therefore far too soon to pull conclusions. Yet early indications are not entirely auspicious. The Dow Jones has shed some 300 points since January 3's opening whistle. Both SAMP and NASDAQ have endured parallel losses on a percentage basis. Yet for emphasis, January is youthful and the stock market may end the month very deeply in clover. We merely note its early doings. Yet here is one ill omen for the stock market. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Positive economic news, this morning released, yet today's stock market runs to very strange and perverse settings. Positive economic showings leave Wall Street wringing its hands in dreadful worry. As Yahoo Finance reports. And for the reason it cites. Positive economic showings blast a powerful signal that the Federal Reserve will stick to the warpath and continue raising interest rates. In fairness, we place little faith in government-supplied economic data, particularly positive economic data. Yet Wall Street takes it quite heavily. That is why your editor takes any notice of it whatsoever. How much more positive economic news the stock market can absorb? Real or imagined? We do not know. Yet we hazard it may go to pieces in the face of additional economic joy. But wait, what is this we learn? We have shoveled up news disturbing for Main Street, thus salivating news for Wall Street. Money supply growth recently went negative. For the first occasion in 33 years. 33 years. That is, the rate of money supply growth did not merely slacken. It went into actual contraction, again, for the first occasion in 33 years. And that is a poor economic auger, a worrying straw swaying in the wind. Ryan McMakin of the Libertarian Mises Institute. Money supply growth fell again in November, and this time it turned negative for the first time in 33 years. 
November's drop continues a steep downward trend from the unprecedented highs experienced during much of the past two years. Money supply growth can often be a helpful measure of economic activity, and an indicator of coming recessions. During periods of economic boom, money supply tends to grow quickly as commercial banks make more loans. Recessions, on the other hand, tend to be preceded by slowing rates of money supply growth. Once again, and to emphasize, not only has money supply growth diminished, it has slipped into actual reverse. More. That is generally a red flag for economic growth and employment. It also serves as just one more indicator that the so-called soft landing promised by the Federal Reserve is unlikely to ever be a reality. We are compelled to agree. Any soft landing promised by the Federal Reserve is unlikely to ever be a reality. The foregoing constitutes reliable evidence, in our estimation at least, that the United States economy is careening toward recession. We estimate further that the gathering recession will settle in during 2023's first quarter. Thus we satisfy one of our predictions for the year. The economy will enter recession at one point during the first quarter, the second quarter at the very latest. Even the Federal Reserve will be unable to miss the recessionary realities. It will then take to the straight about. And reverse course, it will begin lowering interest rates, and at a clip. This we forecast for May, no later than June. Wall Street will finally have its desperately desired pivot. That in turn brings us to our second 2023 prediction. The stock market will recover its bounce this year, even if perhaps January ends in red. The Dow Jones will close the year above 36,000. The SAMP 500 will close the year above 4,300 and the NASDAQ will close the year above 15,000. To proceed. Gold will end 2023 near $3,000, oil above $125. Bitcoin will end 2023 somewhere between $0 and $60,000. Finally, though unrelated, the United States House of Representatives will elect a speaker sometime before midnight strikes on December 31. Yet it may be a near-run thing. Thus concludes our crystal gazing for this year. We advise you to invest accordingly. Our advice is free of course. And as you know, a man gets what he pays for in life. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available, and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? How should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Markus Dahn.